Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's episode, I actually wanted to cover off something that is gaining a lot of traction in the market today. Um, especially when you're looking at things that are going on in the economy today and just in the world with some of the movements, some of the challenges, uh, some of the issues out there, which also presents an issue around information that gets relayed on the internet. Um, and there's a lot of conversation going on, a lot of investment in technology going on nowadays on determining whether or not there are certain articles or there are certain, you know, whether it be tweets, whether it be whatever it may be, some form of content that's posted online to determine whether it's uh, legitimate or whether it's actually fake. So in today's episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how to build a fake news detector, we'll call it that, um, using a passive aggressive classifier in SK Learn. And we got some really good sample data that's on Kaggle to help us support that. So I'm going to use two types of sample data, which I will link down below. But in the first one, what we're going to do is we're going to build some data. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, open up that source right now. And so we're going to be using this data set, which essentially has a bunch of different fields, including the ID, the title, the author, the actual text of the article, um, and at the same time, a label one or zero. So one means that it's unreliable or fake. Zero means that it's reliable. There's a testing file. There's also a submit file. We're going to be using the train file for this. I'm going to be relying on a completely different test file that is unseen to this. The format is going to be a little bit different just to give it some realization for us to really understand whether or not this model is going to work and if there's opportunity to tweak it to make it better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fire up a terminal. And in that terminal, we're going to go ahead and start a brand new virtual environment. So I'm going to go on my desktop here and I'm going to make a virtual directory. So make dir and we'll just call it fake news or something like that. And so now that I have that, I'm going to CD into fake news and we're going to not only set up a brand new Python environment, but we're also going to set up all the dependencies, including how to set up a Jupyter notebook uh, and use that in the actual um, virtual environment as well. So first things first, I'm actually in the fake news directory, as you can see. So let me just make this a little bit bigger so all of us can see what I'm doing here. So I'm in the actual fake news directory that I just created. I LS into it. So right now it's blank. So we're going to go ahead and create a virtual environment and we'll call it VENV. And I want to obviously run this in Python three. So we're going to wait for that to create. And it's just create setting up all the relevant tools that you need for that. So now when I LS into this, I actually have my virtual environment. And now let's go ahead and switch into our virtual environment. So source VENV bin activate. So really the motive behind why I want to design something like this is, you know, you can always put put up something like a Django front end. And if you wanted, you can copy and paste an article online, put it in here, see whether or not the the, you know, algorithm kicks it out as fake news or, or real news or not. Now keep in mind, this is a what I would call a toy model, something that we're going to play around with, we're going to try in production. I would probably run a lot more tests against it. And at the end of this video, I'm going to talk to you about some of the positives and negatives about designing something the way that we're doing it today. But the intent of today is also for you guys to learn some of the syntax and how to actually do some manipulation of the data within Python. All right, so now that's done, we're just going to go ahead and run the IPython command to get in, uh, open up a kernel for Jupyter Notebook. So install user, and then we'll just call it name is equal to, we, we, we call their virtual directory VENV. All right, so I've gone ahead and installed the kernel spec for this. So now we can go ahead and fire up Jupyter Notebook. And I want to do this in Jupyter just because it's going to be a lot easier for us to um, learn as we go. And I still also have to go ahead and transfer those files or download those files, which I'll do in a quick second. So as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new terminal. I'm going to use VENV because that's the terminal that I'm going to be putting all my libraries into. All right, so I've gone ahead and downloaded all of those different files into here. So, so the one we're going to use to do all of our testing is actually this fake news folder right here. Remember, this has a submit, test, and train. I'm just going to be using the train so I can technically get rid of these because um, I don't need them. And then I have a whole bunch of different fake news articles that have already been curated from a different source and some true ones. So I'm also not only going to do a test against the training data and see how that does from a accuracy perspective. I'm going to use the passive aggressive classifier score. I'll also do a K means as well against it. And then I'm going to put data against it that it's never seen and the format is absolutely different as well. So we'll see how this test uh, veers out. So let's go ahead and download some of the dependencies we're going to need for this. So 
We're definitely going to need pandas, so let's go ahead back to our terminal here. So we're going to go ahead and do pip install pandas. And then the other one we're going to need is sklearn. And I believe those are the only two that we're going to be using, so it's very simple. So just pip install pandas, pip install sklearn, and then we should be good from there. So pip install sklearn. So I'm not gonna go ahead and put a file that's gonna have all these different uh, libraries in there because it's very simple. All right, so we're gonna minimize this and we're gonna minimize this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start copying and pasting a little bit of the code um, because I don't see the point in typing in the libraries, but let's talk through them anyways. So we're gonna need pandas, obviously. We're gonna be using the TFIDF vectorizer, the passive aggressive classifier, train test split, the accuracy score, confusion matrix, and a cross-validation for k-means. And the reason why we're using the TD TFIDF vectorizer is right now all of this information is in text, so we need to vectorize the text so that we have an array or something that is usable from a machine learning standpoint, which is why we're using that. So let's go ahead and now, so now I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the actual fake news folder and I'll show you what that looks like. So read underscore CSV, and then we'll just go fake news forward slash train. Okay, so now if I wanna go ahead and expand this to show you what it looks like, this is what the data set looks like. So it's got the title of the actual article, it's got the author, it's got the text. And then remember one is it's unreliable, meaning it's fake and zero means that it's reliable. So I wanna convert that to like, it actually saying that it's real or fake cause I'm gonna forget what that means. So I wrote a little a very small little script here, which I'm going to copy and paste into here as well, which will review line by line. So I said anywhere there's a zero, convert that into real. Anywhere there's a one, convert that into a fake. We're going to go ahead and relabel everything in, in the label column here based on this definition here. And so when I do that, so let me get rid of this here. We'll go back and look at the DF again or data frame. And now when I look at it, you'll see that it actually says fake, real, fake, and all that stuff. So I wanted to say that just because it's easy. So the next thing I want to see is whether or not this is a balanced uh, data set or not. Because if it's imbalanced, it's going to throw off our machine learning model. So we need to go ahead and make sure that it is, in fact, somewhat balanced. So it doesn't have to be exactly, but it does have to be something that I'm comfortable with. And so what I've done here is forgot the S. So this tells me that I have about 10,413 fake reviews, about 10,387 real reviews. I'm comfortable with that. That's more than sufficient to go ahead and continue with this model from a balanced standpoint. All right, so now re remember, I've pre-written some of this code already, so I'm gonna be copying and pasting it, but I'll talk about it as I go so that I'm not leaving you guys completely lost. So now what we gotta do is we gotta go ahead and bring out our train set and our test set. In order for me to do that, I need to go ahead and split the X column, and in the X column, in this case, I'm just using the text. So I'm trying to find the relationship between the text and the label. So the article itself, the full text article, and whether or not it's real or not. I'm saying that I want us to have the test size to so be about 25% of the data set today. So of the roughly 20,000 rows, 25% of that's gonna be held as a test set. And I wanna shuffle it all over the place just so that I get a good mix of the sample as well. Then I wanna go ahead and vectorize the text. So first of all, let's remove all the stop words. Let's get all the stop words out of here. And then I wanna vectorize this text. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So the next piece of this model is, now I'm gonna go ahead and fit and transform my X values. And because these are encoded, uh, I have to go ahead and say as type U. Um, so I'm gonna do the same thing to my train set and my test set. So I'm gonna decode those. And now I have something that I can use to actually build a machine learning model. So now I'm gonna use something called the passive aggressive classifier. And if you wanna learn more about the passive aggressive classifier, I would definitely Google it, but at a very, very high level, what it does is it creates a hyperplane between um, what we consider true or false or fake or real in this case. And it tries to adjust the weight itself as it learns if something is fake or if something is real. It tries to adjust that hyperplane over a vector space and correct itself where it's possible. So that's a very high level explanation. But again, if you wanna learn more about it, I would go ahead and Google that. So now what we're doing is we're gonna go ahead and fit the vectorized X model. And so in this case, this is the vectorized article. So this article that was text has now been converted into a vector that we're gonna fit and we're gonna fit it against the Y train data, which in this case is whether it's real or fake. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. 
And it basically gives me the default characteristics of the passive aggressive classifier, which is all in here. You can go ahead and change some of these things if you want. For example, max iteration is already set to default, so technically I didn't need to put that in there. Um, but I was you know, messing around with this. I put 150 at some point. So you can change this to whatever you want at the end of the day. So now that we've actually fit the model, now we wanna go ahead and see, all right, so that 25% that we held out on, how is it actually going to do against it? And so now what I'm doing here is I'm actually gonna go ahead and predict whether or not this article, so based on that 25% that we said we were gonna hold out, it's gonna go ahead and predict against this model, which is the passive aggressive classifier, and it's gonna predict whether it's real or fake. And then we're gonna say, okay, well, how did that compare to the actual Y test values that we had for that? So we're gonna go ahead and print the passive aggressive classifier accuracy, which is a score that's available within. So let's go ahead and run that. What this tells me, this is a 96.29% match, which is a pretty impressive score. What that tells me is that 96% of the times I'm gonna be able to predict correctly based on this given data set, whether or not it's truly a fake or truly a real article. And a lot of that is going to be driven by the confusion matrix. So if I were to go ahead and show you the confusion matrix, what this tells me is that I have 2,488 true positives and 2,519 false negatives. What this basically means, in other words, is that 2,488 times I've actually predicted something that was a real article to be actually real. And 2,519 times I've actually predicted something that was fake to be actually fake. And to get this 96%, you're basically adding these two numbers and dividing it by everything, and that gets you your accuracy rate. So overall, based on the holdout, this is actually a pretty good model. So the PAC, or the Passive Aggressive Classifier, is actually a really good mechanism to help you determine whether or not something is real or fake. Now you can apply this against things like tweets, you can apply it against like customer reviews, basically anything you want, you can apply this against. Now I always get a question around, okay, well, you know what? You haven't applied the gold standard, which really is the K folds mean. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna define an X and my X is gonna be my vectorized text all over again. So there's no holdout. This is the entire data frame, but I'm still using the actual article itself. So I'm not using a 25%, I'm using 100% of the data frame. And I'm gonna define that as my X. And in order for me to go ahead and calculate my K mean score, I'm gonna say that I'm gonna use my pack model, which is defined up here, so my passive aggressive classifier. I wanna define my X, which I've already defined up here, which is our vectorized text. The label is going to be whether it's true or, or whether it's real or fake, excuse me, and I'm gonna do five folds. And now this is gonna give me my, my K-fold accuracy, which in machine learning is typically considered a gold standard. So also 96.27%, very close. So what this tells me is so far, this is a pretty good model. If I wanted to put this model into production with the data set that I'm given today, 96% of the times I'll be able to predict whether it's true or false. I wanna stress test this a little bit further because although this number sounds impressive, it's actually not 100% true. Here's what I mean by that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring in that data set that was unseen to us, the one that has nothing to do with the test or training on this. This is a data set that was separate and it's a separate link in itself. Let's go ahead and bring up what this looks like. So I'll just bring up DF true. And what this is, this is all the different articles out there that have been vetted and determined to be actually true or real articles in this case. And then we have DF fake, which we already know is a set of articles that have fake reviews in them. And I did a little bit of massaging of the data. All I did is I took out the publisher in this case, just because if I put that in there, it may actually use that as a representation to see whether or not something is true or fake. And I wanted to take that out. So I just, I've just replaced that. So we're going to be leveraging DF fake and we're going to be leveraging DF true. I did combine them in one data frame called DF final, which has everything in there. But for the purpose of this exercise, we're just gonna keep them separate. So we can actually do our analysis separately. So what I did now is next, is I'm gonna build a small little function. What this function is gonna help us do is it's gonna help us predict whether or not something is true or fake using our model. What I'm basically gonna be passing into this is the new text that has never been seen that is not even part of this model at all. And it's gonna use that new text and it's gonna use our model basically, our pack model to predict whether or not this is true or false or fake or real in this case. So let's go ahead and run this model. So that's sitting there. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is the following. We're gonna build out on this a little bit more, but I wanna show you how this works essentially. So now I've got the find label function 
In there, I'm gonna pass in DF text and I'm gonna pass in the first instance of the actual text. So whatever the first article was, so let's go ahead and fix this up here. So the first article in this case, so if I were to just go ahead and pull up this first article here, so let's pull it down here. This was the actual article itself and it went through, did all the machine learning against it, did all the removal of the stop words, compared it to our model and says that this is actually a real model. Now if I go ahead and do the same thing with fake, it's actually gonna say that this is fake. And so it's actually done a really good job of learning whether or not this is fake or real. But I'm not gonna stop there. I'm gonna go a step further because I wanna iterate through every single true article or real article and every single fake article to determine the accuracy rate of how well this thing determines it. So we already know that for DF true that all of these articles are actually real articles. So I don't have to worry about doing a, some kind of a validation against that. But here's what I do want to do. So I'm going to bring up another function. This is a bit lengthy that I wrote, but it's very straightforward at the end of the day. So let's go ahead and bring that here. So I'm going to bring this in. Let me explain what this does. This will go through the DF true data frame that we have. So all the articles that we know that are true. Anytime that this thing predicts that it's going to be real, it's going to allocate it a one. Otherwise, it's going to give it a zero and it's going to iterate through everything in DF true. And then it's going to determine of the actual, all the articles that are in DF true, how many times that it actually predicted to be one. Now, in theory, it should be 100%. All of these should be one because we know these are all true articles. But let's go ahead and give this a look to see what it does. So what this tells me is that 71.5% of the times this was able to accurately predict whether something was true or not, which is far less than the 96% we saw above. And this is a caution that I throw when people build these kind of algorithms is that you can't always use just test data and determine test data for that specific subset. You have to introduce new types of data that the model's never seen before. The format is completely different in terms of how the articles are structured and all that other kind of stuff. Having said that, 71.5% is still a very, very, very good score because what this tells me is that roughly 72% of the times or seven out of 10 times, I'll be able to determine whether something is real or not. Now let's do the same thing for the fake side. And if you're wondering what these numbers actually mean, if we go back up to the actual confusion matrix right up here, what I'm doing with the true one here, so this line right up here, the 71%, I'm basically calculating the true positives. And that's what this number is gonna be, or this is gonna represent in that confusion matrix. And then 70% of the times, which is still not bad, anytime that something is fake, this thing actually was able to predict that it's fake, I'm actually calculating the true negatives in this case. So again, not a bad model. So on average, what this is telling me is that this model that we just built very quickly in a couple of minutes, without doing any tweaking yet to the actual hyperparameters, we're able to get roughly a 70% accuracy if we throw some kind of an article at this. So if I were to put this up in Django, for example, that means that anytime you copy and paste this, I can with 70% confidence say whether or not that is true or false, which is pretty damn good in today's day and age when there's so much misinformation out there. Now there's ways to get this model to be a lot stronger. We can look at SVM, we can look at neural networks. There's a whole bunch of different ways to do this, but using sklearn that already has the pack classifier or the passive aggressive classifier, this is a great way to start. I know a lot of people use this. Again, the power of machine learning in a few lines of code. And you know, this is really meant for some of the beginners and maybe intermediate programmers or data scientists out there that are looking to learn a little bit more about this. The one caution I will throw out there is that there's a lot of organizations, uh, you know, like the Big Fang organizations, for example, that are investing millions and millions of dollars in determining misinformation that's out there. Um, and the reason why that's a little bit more difficult to do is the actual data set. So right now we've got a label data set but getting a real label data set from articles that are just posted out there is very, very difficult to do because you don't know whether something is true or not unless somebody's actually gone ahead and validated that this is misinformation, in which case you can classify it. But other than that, it's very difficult to do today. So they're, they're investing a lot of money to figure out how you can actually better label your data. And once you have label data, building the model is actually not the difficult part. It's really getting your data organized. But you know, again, if you do have the right data, if you're looking at reviews, for example, if you're looking at Twitter comments or you're looking at Facebook messages or whatever it may be, this is a great way to start. Take that text that you're concerned about, throw it into a model like this and see what the model says. So really good project for beginners. And guys, if you guys like this, please consider liking and subscribing and I will see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye bye.